Next, now we are going to talk about adding new columns in Power Query. Sometimes you have to create or you have to generate some new data columns to add to the original ones that you have imported into your Power Query editor. And there are several methods and there are different kinds of new columns that you can create and Power Query provides us with, you know, those different options. Let's go to take a look at some data set that I have prepared for this. So if I open up my Power Query Essentials folder, I have the number eight Excel workbook add columns. So let's open up the add columns workbook. So I have three worksheets here basically and you know I just want to use each one of them to treat different topics in adding of columns. I've got this one for general and data type specific columns. I have another one for conditional columns and yet another one for custom columns. So I will import each one of them um, one after the other or I may just bring them all in at the same time and discuss different topics in adding columns in Power Query. In my fresh Power BI desktop file, I'm going to get data from Excel workbook. I'm connecting to number eight file, add columns. And I'll be bringing in all three of them at the same time, even though I'm going to have to discuss each one of them separately. I will click on transform data to open up my Power Query editor. And I'm going to start with the general and data type specific. Anything that involves adding columns in Power Query will have to come from the Add Column tab. So I have to make sure that I go to my Add Column tab first and, you know, every singular button you see in the Add Column tab is going to generate a new data column for us. So I'll start with the two simplest options that we can have. The first one is to duplicate the column and the second one is to create an index column. So if you have a column like this, and for whatever reason, best known to you, you would like to create a replica of that column, maybe because you want to transform one original one and you would like to keep a copy of it before you do your transformation, you can easily click on the duplicate column button. And every single time you add a new column in Power Query, it will forever go to the end of your data. So the new column will always become the last column you have in your data set now, if you feel like taking it away from there, you can right click on the new column and use the move option to start moving left one after the other. Or if you like, instead of moving one by one like this, you can easily right click and jump to one end. So you can, for example, move all the way to the beginning. And if you also wish, which is usually the case, you can just drag across to where you would like your new column to stay. Once you get to a desired location, you leave your dragging and you will have your new column situated in that position. So that is how to duplicate a column, simple and straightforward. The other option that we have is to create an index column. So if I go to my index column option, you can see there is a drop down there. So I can use that drop down to select either an index column that will start from zero or something that will start from one or I can even create a customized one, right? So if I create an index column from zero, I'm going to have my number listings from zero all the way to the end. I can create one from one, which can be good sometimes if you want to do some uh, data cleaning gymnastics that will require that you label every row one by one. You can need to use something like this. Or if you also like, you can use a custom that will provide you with a form to specify which number you want to start from and how much or by how much are you willing to increase. So if I'm starting from five and I'm increasing by five, then I'm going to have an index column that has five, 10, 15, 20, and so on and so forth. Now, apart from this direct column creation that we have done in duplicate and index, there are also some types of column creation that are usually driven by the data type of the column. And I'm going to discuss this in the next video.